Hi, my name is Thais Gibson and I'm the co-owner and creator of the Personal Development School. This is your Daily Breakthrough video and in this video I'm going to talk to you a little bit about why dismissive avoidance can sometimes feel disempowered in relationships because they feel like they are bad partners. So this is something that happens often and I think it's something that's sort of underrated in terms of how much it's discussed and the root causes for why it's taking place being discussed. So we're going to do a bit of a deep dive into this. Um, before I dive in, please know that we are still doing a sale to support our community during all of the uncertainty and, um, you know, I don't want to get too into like what's going to happen and, and all that stuff, but if there is a second wave of um, COVID coming and all those different things, I think a really important thing to do, whether it's through the personal development school or just through anything in life, I think it's a really good time to set intentions. Like if I am in a space where I'm feeling a little more isolated again, if I am in a space where things might be restricted to a certain degree, then, you know, how can I show up for myself and what plans can I have to like insulate myself in advance so that I can leave that hopefully last period, um, of, quarantine or isolation or whatever it might be, having taken things away from it. So whether it's like a bucket list of like, you know, things that you want to do, activities you can do from your home, um, courses you can take through the personal development school, maybe old conversations you want to have with, with old friends, whatever it might be. I'm just saying, I'm not trying to cause any alarm. I don't know, of course, at any point in time, what's going to take place, but just suggestions that it's really important to like prepare yourself ahead of time, set intentions for yourself so that you don't feel like you're just existing during that time and just responding to what's happening, but you've actually initiated, actively initiated a plan for yourself going forward. Um, so that you don't feel disempowered by, by some of the craziness that's happening. Anyways, that was sort of like a rant. <laughs> so, um, if you want to join the school, if you want to sign up, you can use the coupon code with you all one word. And, um, it is for three months, six months, 12 month memberships to the school. We provide a free 30, 30 day money back guarantee. Um, if anybody's like unhappy with the content, we haven't had anybody request a money back guarantee for that reason. Um, since we've launched the school. So that's been a beautiful blessing. Um, and yeah, the coupon code. Oh, I don't know if I said the coupon code It's with you all in word. I'll put a link in the description box below and on this, on the uh, video. So oftentimes, and, and, you know, I say this from like, not just my personal perspective of like noticing things in, with individuals inside of the school, but, um, I've been in practice working with clients for a very long time and I've been seeing many, many people a week, um, probably like four times your typical person in, in my role, um, just in terms of volume of people and like making time for people and seeing a tremendous amount of people for so long. And I've asked all these questions, like, what's your experience? What do you experience as a dismissive avoidant? when X, Y, and Z happens. And so, you know, these answers that you're getting are coming from a whole bunch of research with like real life people. Um, and something that is extremely common that I've seen is that dismissive avoidance will feel like they are bad partners. And it's really interesting because it often sort of takes place in duality. It's like they're aware of their differences to a certain degree and do differences, not meaning like things are bad or wrong, but this difference in terms of how they perceive relationships and how much they feel willing and open to putting into relationships versus the average person. And so they're aware to a certain degree of like, okay, you know, I might not be as interested in commitment. I might not be normal in the sense of um, how much I prioritize a relationship, how much I put it on a pedestal, how romantic I feel towards relationships and how much that's like a huge, um, you know, priority in my life or, or huge need in my life. Um, so they can sometimes feel like, you know, is something wrong with me? And they can give that meaning and that can make them feel like they need to retract and pull away. And it's very disempowering because it activates those big shame and defectiveness wounds inside the relationship to self. But then on the other hand, they can sort of go to the opposite end of the spectrum, which is like, why is everybody like this? People should be taking care of themselves. And, you know, why are people relying on, on each other so much? It doesn't, it doesn't seem reasonable or, or rational. So they can sort of go in either polarity. Now on one end, and this is like common with the human experience, um, for a lot of individuals, you know, on one end, they can have a superiority take or stance, right? Like, Oh, like people don't know how to show up for themselves or regulate themselves. Like people aren't logical or rational enough and sort of be in that, that space of going, well, I am, and I'm the dismissive avoidant and things like that. But then at other points in time, and especially when they're trying in relationships and they're not getting, 
the response that they're hoping for or looking for, especially when they're invested in a relationship, essentially, like basically any point from honeymoon phase forward. Often instead, when they feel like they're not doing something right or, or somebody's upset with them again for something or somebody's being critical, they often instead feel like, okay, I'm just defective. Something's wrong with me. I'm not enough. I'm unworthy. I'm not able. I've heard these words so many times. I am not able or capable of giving this person what they, they need, so they deserve more. And they really make it, you know, them being wrong, them being bad. And then oftentimes where we won't see, and I can make a separate video on this, why we don't see dismissive avoidance chase after partners a lot of the time, especially if there's like a breakup. Often why we don't see this just at a high level is that um, they feel so disempowered. They like lose hope and faith in themselves. And so they won't be like, oh, you know, I can do this. I've got this. I'll figure it out. I'm going to woo the person and you know, do some romantic gestures and save the day. And I know I can count on myself to, to fix these mistakes. They don't trust themselves to be able to show up in the way that they think their partner wants a lot of the time. And so sometimes they literally will, will adopt the, the mind frame or the um, like set point of thinking that basically says, you know, why bother? It's not going to work anyway. So there's no point in trying. And it can be a very like defeatist mindset, but a lot of it's because they didn't have modeling that showed them these things and that helped them develop like this belief in what they can do and how it should be. And also because they are acutely aware, even though it's at a subconscious level for most, um, that they're a little bit out of touch with their, their emotions, that their emotions are a little bit repressed. And so those emotions for most people are what drive them to recognize all these things and drive change and, and create that passionate desire to fix or save the relationship. And for dismissive avoidance, if that's repressed and if numbness and, and the blanket over their emotions sort of keeps them safe, then emotionally safe. And it doesn't actually, but in relationship to themselves, that's a coping strategy that they've developed and, and they've built in positive associations to it. So they perceive that it makes them safe. Then um, often what this feels like is just, you know, I'm, I'm incompetent underneath that. And so they desire to get it right, but they often feel incompetent. And I, I want you to imagine, like, I think everybody's had some form of experience. I've heard, I've heard so many stories like this over the, like these over the years. And I want you to think of a time in your life where like, maybe it was at a job, maybe it was like on a date, maybe it was, um, who knows, just some time in your life where you felt like you weren't capable of doing something and you knew you couldn't, or you just knew that. And, and I think everybody can do anything when they put their mind to it and develop the skills and give themselves time and, and all these different things. But like, um, let's just say you've had an experience where like you literally believed I cannot do this, whatever it is. And you just fled the scene. Like you just, you don't respond to the, the message or you don't go on that next date or you don't show up to work the next day or whatever it is. I've heard so many versions of this story and it's because you're so afraid of feeling that shame, that shame that you've associated with incompetence. And feeling like, well, I'm out of my league here. I can't do this. And it just feels scary and shameful and confusing and disempowering. And you're like, well, there's no point. I can't do this. This isn't me. And that experience that most other attachment styles have felt in some different form is often the exact type of feeling that has been described to me hundreds of times by dismissive avoidance in, t in situations where they feel like they can't change their part of a problem in a relationship. And so they need to flee the scene and it's that sort of space that they're coming from. So they can fear people seeing them like this. And also obviously if they feel criticized on top of that, they feel even more unsafe and it triggers even more shame and fear and confusion and all these different things. So this is common. It often comes in the most when a partner is expressing their needs to a dismissive avoidant, the dismissive avoidant thinks they're meeting them, but the partner's not expressing the need with a strategy and painting a picture. So the need's like, oh, I need more love or I need more closeness. And the dismissive avoidant thinks like an act of service is going to do that when the person really needed like a physical hug or they needed like a love letter or they needed, but they didn't express how. And so the DA loves through their modeling, their programming, their experiences. And then when they get negative feedback, when they're trying, that's usually the exact dynamic that makes them feel the need to like shut down and run away and pull back. So this is really important to note. If you are the dismissal avoidant experiencing this, do not worry. Okay. It's normal to feel these things. It's just part of your programming. You're, there's nothing wrong with you. This isn't like 
you know, something that's defective in you, this is like literally no different than somebody new, learning a new language. You just didn't have a lot of the modeling for that language. You have less exposure, which means it's going to take a little bit longer to learn. But all these patterns are reprogrammable. We weren't born with these things. They were programmed into us and we can deprogram them or reprogram new, empowering, inspiring patterns the create fulfillment and thriving relationship dynamics, just the same way that these things were programmed in, in the first place. So keep that in mind. Um, a really high level, easy place to start is to ask for clarity. Hey, you know, I'm confused about what that need me means. Can you paint a picture of what that looks like? Can you give me a real life example? Um, you know, can you tell me a strategy of how, um, can you clarify further? Okay. These sorts of things, expressing shame, like, Hey, I, I feel like, like something's wrong with me when I, when I can't meet the need or when I get criticized and it's really hard for me, it makes me feel the need to shut down and protect myself. I need more clarity. I need reminders. I need a little bit of assistance at the beginning as I'm trying to do this. Could you try to do that? And, and I'm going to do my best from my end to meet you halfway or even further. Okay. So these sorts of things like being vulnerable, opening yourself, sharing, communicating, asking for what you need in these dynamics and situations. And then of course, as the DA as well, doing the work on yourself to reprogram your attachment style. And we have amazing in-depth intro and advanced courses for doing that um, inside of the school. There's tons of videos on this channel that touch on different reprogramming tools and tactics, um, but expressing needs as a dismissive avoidant or from the dismissive avoidant, both are very important to, to creating sort of emotional immunity to this defeating cycle. So I hope that all makes sense. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe if you're getting a lot of value out of this channel, and I will see you in the next video.